Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the special cells method. Um, this will come in pretty handy from time to time um, if you're trying to find um, a particular type of cell and then do something with it. Um, so uh, if you, I'll have a link to this Microsoft doc here as well and again this docs.microsoft.com is going to be a really good friend of yours if you're starting to do VBA. Um, sometimes it's very simple in what it tells you um, and you really have to kind of understand what that sim simple statement means. Um, but it's sort of simple by design. It doesn't, it, it, in some ways it could be more helpful, but it's sort of designed for people who already understand VBA. Sometimes it's not necessarily designed to educate you on like like a you know be like a training course for VBA or something like that. But anyway, uh, so let's read, read what this says. Returns a range object that represents all the cells that match the specified type and value. So we have our expression. So this might be the the um, uh, well as it says here, expression is a variable that represents a range object. So you could put a range in here or some sort of expression that defines a range. So like um, sometimes we declare a range as a variable um, and then maybe we'll call that thing my range. Um, so you could put my range dot special cells in there. Um, so the type, uh, you type in the Excel cell type and then the value if type is either Excel constants or type formulas, this argument is used to determine which type of cells to include in the result. These values can be added together to return more than one type the default is to select all constants or formulas. So if you, if you maybe wanted to have a formula with just multiplication in it or something like that, you might use that. But um, that's we'll maybe get into that down the road, but for now we're just going to kind of understand how to use this simply. So these are the different conditions that special cells can look for, and then it has a numerical value. And this numerical value can be very helpful because it can basically instead of typing this you can just put in this. Um, so anyway um, I'll have again links to this in the comments but let's go to our sheet. So now in the sheet I have um, I have just some cells a couple of them have numbers in it. This one has a comment in it. This and this are blank. Uh, I think that one of these has, yeah, that has a formula in it. All right, so let's go through them one by one just to give you an idea. So we're going to step through this. Um, I put this on error resume next statement in here. And this basically just tells VBA if you're going through this and you and you come up to an error, just go to the next line. They ignore the error. Um, and the reason it's going to do that is if this first one, for instance, we're going to select this. So cells, special cells, Excel cell type blanks dot select. So it's going to select any cells that are blank. And you can see it selected this one and this one. All right. So we could also, if you go back to here, uh, blank is four. So I think we can go um, just make this four. Let's try it again. Oh, I don't want to do that one. I want to do this one four. Sorry. So we go back up here and we'll select out of that and see if it does it again. And you can see it is the same thing. So <clears throat> sometimes when you're coding, um, it's just easier if you can remember these numbers, um, you can use that number instead of typing that whole big string of text. But anyway, um, that's that one. Uh, this next one is Excel special cells, Excel cell type comments. So this is going to select any cell that has a comment in it, which is this one right here. This is a little tricky though because in the new version of Excel you have new comment, new note. Um, it's actually going to select notes, not comments. So I think uh, the people at Excel 
used to just have comment, but recently I think with 365 they added note, so you can have a note or a comment. Um, so this comments actually looks for notes, not comments, so I apologize on behalf of Microsoft Excel even though I don't work for them. That's silly. Um, anyway, so uh, next one is Excel cell type constants. We're going to select any cells that have constants. Uh, that, that argument could also be just written as two. Um, so when we go through this one, you can see it selected all the cells that have uh, basically numbers in them that aren't a formula, that aren't blank. So a constant, um, I don't think it can be text. Let me just put the word test in there and see what happens if we do that. Oh, yeah, no. So it can just basically, any cell that um, doesn't have a, a, a formula in it, basically, um, so that, that's why they call it a constant, because that cell is not going to change unless you change it. Um, whereas with a formula, it's going to change if you change something in another cell. Um, so the next one, we can search for ones with formulas. Um, and this one might be handy, and I'm not going to try and go over how to do all that in this video, but uh, a lot of times if you give somebody else a sheet, um, they, you know, it might have formulas in it, and you you want them to be able to um, to to add values, but you don't want them to be able to erase your formulas. So you might use this cell, special cells, Excel cell type formulas, and then to select those cells and then protect them um, on your sheet. So you could write a this code and and have it basically protect all the shells, cells of formulas. So you wouldn't have to sit there and figure out, oh, where are all my formulas at? You can just let it find them for you and then protect just those cells. So that's my why you might want to use that. Um, the next one, um, I, I wrote this one a little different just to show you what happens. So it says columns one. So this would be looking in columns one. And it's going to say special cells, Excel cell type, last cell dot select. But when we select it, you can still see it goes to the last cell in my range. And it's looking at a rectangle. So you might think that this is actually the last cell in my range. But it's looking at a rectangle. So if I've got anything in columns, it's going to basically go to the last used row in the last used column. And it's going to select that cell. Um, so if we go back again, it does that. Now, the reason I put this columns one in here is just to show you that you might want to use this to find the last cell in a column, like this one. But it doesn't work like that. This special cells, Excel type last cell, always finds the last cell that's used. It doesn't, doesn't care if you, if you define a range in front of it. It's just going to go by the whole spreadsheet. So we have another, there's an end method um, used for that that we'll do in another video, but I may have already done it in one of the previous ones, I'm not sure. Um, and then this is Excel cell type visible, so this just selects everything um, that isn't a hidden cell. So you might use this if you're trying to um, copy everything on this sheet and then paste it to another sheet, this would be a great way to do that. You would go to this one, and then you would hit copy. And you can see it, it's copied everything. Um, and it's, to be clear, it's not just copying everything that you see on my window here. If you scroll all the way down to the, you know, cell whatever, five quadrillion it's going to select it. It's all of that selected. So it basically does the same thing as clicking up here in the top, like if you've ever done that before. And then uh, this last one, uh, I'm going to hit escape to get out of the cut copy mode. So this last one, this one um, I've used a lot. So uh, this is kind of how you can sort of use special cells 
to do something you might need to do. So in this particular case, I'm looking in columns number three, which is this one here, special cells, Excel type blank. So it's going to look for any cells that are blank in column three. And then it's going to delete, uh, I don't want to delete the column. Well, I might. So in this case, it, it, this would be kind of a dumb way to write it because you're basically saying, look at column three. If it if it has a blank in it, then delete the whole column. But you probably wouldn't do that um, because you would want to you would sort of want to cross-reference. So you would want to look in all the rows, like a particular row, uh, and then delete a column, or look at a column and delete a row. So in this one, uh, I'm saying, OK, go through my whole column here, column three, and if I find a cell that's blank, delete the entire row. So if we do that, it should delete this row right here. And it did. All right. So um, if you have a, if you have a spreadsheet, for instance, um, I have one where I export, and sometimes it has errors in it. And on those errors, it'll leave a particular um, cell blank on a particular row or column. I mean, so I might use that to say, okay, just all the all the areas where I have those blanks, delete those. So anyway, that's the special cells method. Uh, on to the next lesson.